Good afternoon, Pablo. Uh, I really want to talk with you for about 15-20 minutes that you can tell us a little bit about the Argentinian crisis. Uh, first of all, uh, it just happens so that you're born and raised in Argentina. Uh, you'll tell us how long you lived there. And secondly, you went there just a couple of months ago, a month ago, you went there, you visited Argentina before the crisis began, and you brought with you the crisis. So you were actually in Argentina as the crisis began to evolve and as we all got to read more about the Argentinian crisis in the newspapers and on Zero Hedge, you were actually living there. So uh, if you can tell us what's going on or what you saw there on the ground and what is your perception about the uh, emerging uh, crisis, especially as it goes on in Argentina, because they're separately in Brazil and Turkey and so on. But, uh, what's, what are your observations about the Argentinian crisis? Yeah, so let, 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 me, let me give you a little bit of the, the background of the story uh, to understand what I think was a uh, partially emotionally triggered uh, crisis. Um, because of that, of the history that I'm going to uh, allude to now. So, um, Argentina during the uh, 1990s mm -hmm. uh, went through a period of, af after basically uh, decades and decades of uh, periods of high inflation in the 19, uh, end of the 1980s, we had uh, a hyperinflation, like Weimar style uh, hyperinflation, uh, I think 25,000% uh, inflation in one year. Uh, and Argentina was a symbol of Latin America, Latin American crisis, and it was also a symbol of a banana republic or. Uh, well, uh, uh, obviously, Argentinians don't like to hear uh, the, those the, comparisons, the, 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 right? Those comparisons, yeah. but uh, because we, we used to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, back in, in the 1930s, 1940s, uh, Argentina was, I think, uh, the, the number, the economy number six in the world. It the used to be very prosperous, a very land of opportunity, and, uh, and then successive uh, bad administrations uh, uh, basically managed to turn a very rich country into a... Uh, Drive it into poverty slowly. Yeah. Now, my understanding, the way I've read economic history is that back in the 19th century, Argentina was the, basically the richest country in America and... Up to after, after, North, after North America, obviously. Uh, uh, oh, no, 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 no. After. Before, and, uh, and Argentina was uh, definitely richer than United States, definitely richer than Canada. And it was only in the uh, 20th century that America was able to keep moving upward and forward and surpass Argentina. And Argentina was basically uh, moving slowly and flat. In other words, and the way I've also read is that Argentina had nine or ten economic and financial crises during the 20th century. It's basically a country of mismanagement. When I was studying international economics and finance, for all the horrible uh, economic policies, we always gave as an example India and for India and for all bad monetary policies and financial and fiscal policies, we always gave as gave an example Argentina. So Argentina has this history of repeated crisis after crisis. Uh, absolutely. After crisis. Uh, unfortunately, and uh, look, I, I remember when I moved to Europe in uh, my in my my twenties. Uh, I, I remember how impressed I was to see in, in Germany specifically where I lived that people would remember the price. So people in my age, twenty years old or so, would remember prices of objects mm -hmm. from their childhood, right? Sure. Because prices have barely changed. Absolutely. Right? Over a period of 20 years they have barely changed. Whereas my in my 20 years of life in Argentina, uh, basically um, during that time the currency must have lost I don't know 15 zeros or something like that. Yeah. Right? 15 zeros, right? So basically every new currency that they would introduce would be 
they would chop off uh, three it's zeros or, or four six. zeros or five or zeros. Or six. Usually uh, six, three or six. Yeah, usually. something like that. So, so I had no sense whatsoever of the prices of things from last year or two years ago because you know prices were moving up so fast that you completely lose the the relationship to prices that people develop when you have constant prices over, over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that, that's, that's a, indeed what happened in Argentina over, uh, in particular since uh, the 1940s, uh, with a succession of uh, populistic governments and uh, uh, military dictatorships uh, that both competed on you know who did a, a worse a, a, a worse administration right so, so it had something like so, a, a, a runaway inflation or hyperinflation then there was like a currency border they call it correlito right yeah you, was, you, you, ju you jump in the gun so basically um, during the 90s uh -huh. um, the uh, we had a, a very progressive uh, uh, economy minister uh, that basically Mr. Domingo Cavallo, who basically brought a, uh, a period of stability uh, through a system of a currency board, as you mentioned, whereby the peso was uh, tagged to the peg to the to the dollar, um, and the uh, government could not issue debt that w was prevented by law to issue debt that was not backed by reserves. Okay, uh, let me just interject that when we had in 1990s in Bulgaria our hyperinflation and financial crisis, we did exactly the same fix. We fixed the Bulgarian level to the uh, US dollar, and again, the central bank was prevented by law to things to issue currency without dollar backing or for the federal government to run deficits which could be monetized by the central bank. So obviously the fix is well known what it is. So this was the fix and what happened then? Um, well, we, we basically Argentina enjoyed uh, throughout the 90s a period of uh, great prosperity and stability and, stability and attracted capital inflow gigantic inflows of external capital Argentina survived you recall you know we're talking the 90s right you Correct. in our previous video you were mentioning a few emerging market crises that basically uh, shook the world Correct. Uh, such as 97, the, the Asian crisis, but before that, the tequila crisis. Correct. 94 uh, is the tequila crisis. Correct. Correct. So, so basically, in Argentina, sailed through both events, uh, pretty. So it, it affected the economy for for uh, for a short period, but actually, Argentina recovered very very fast, and uh, it became. Uh, like the darling of of the emerging markets in the world, right? And even better, the worse things got in Asia, the more capitals flew out of Asia and into Argentina. Correct. So actually, uh, all these crises were beneficial for Argentina in a sense back then. Correct. Now everything went pretty well, uh, with the exception obviously that there were there were, there were lots of things that. that were perfect. Uh, the, the government had a had a high degree of corruption. Um, they, uh, you know, they, 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 they were, there were there were quite a few things that could have been better. But uh, by and large, the macroeconomic direction of the country was the right one, and the country enjoyed a period of great prosperity. A lot of people came out of poverty, uh, and uh, the uh, also the country became. A, 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 a very well recognized internationally as, as an emerging economy that was doing everything right or, or, or a lot of things right yeah. just like later was Brazil too in that later yeah so and then what happened is that in um, uh, in 1999 uh, Brazil devalued its currency or, 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 or dro dropped, uh, stopped trying to support the level, the, 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 the change rate between the real and the dollar, uh, which uh, led to a significant devaluation. I forgot the number, but must have been, I don't know, probably 30, 40 percent within a month or something like that, uh, which meant that Brazil, uh, uh, as you might be aware, so there is this, uh, this um, 
uh, economic zone called the Mercosur, uh, the which Mer is includes I've been uh, teaching about it for in my international finance courses. Right. Cool. Okay, so so you're there together with Brazil, but now Brazil but all of us divided by 30 right. 40 percent. You're Brazil. all pegged to the dollar, we're pegged to the dollar, and Brazil uh, goes down by 30 percent. So all of a sudden, everything in Brazil becomes 30 40 percent less expensive. Right. There is, there is a, a, a customs union. Not comparable to the EU, but but for many products, uh, custom union. So basically, all of a sudden, Argentinian products become way too expensive, and that led to uh, you know a, a boom in Brazil, but a, a disaster in Argentina. Choked, correct. Choked, choked. choked. Okay. So that, so so Brazilians beggared their neighbors. Correct. Yeah. They beggared Argentina. Okay. So that that was the beginning of. Uh, a crisis which from there became worse and worse uh, coupled with the fact that if you remember uh, the when the when the um, in ar around that time in 99 2000 the dollar was appreciating significantly internationally as well right, right. So, so we are pegged to the strongest currency in the world right which is going up which and we are competing with our neighbors or, or trying to sell to our neighbors which are letting their currencies go down significantly asia asian currencies go down significantly as well in the european prices. currency the euro was the euro was going down as well undervalued was so for for a, for a currency that is for for a country that is uh, dependent on on exports of primary products uh, such as you know uh, um, you know agricultural products and so on that was a, a macroeconomic, macroeconomically very, very, very difficult situation. It was an external, essentially a shock. It was a total shock. It's a currency shock you went through. Exactly. Sense. And, and um, the probably, in hindsight, the uh, mistake back then was not to have reacted in a way of, you know, keeping the. Uh, so-called convertibility, uh, which is a concept that uh, was introduced by the um, uh, administration of uh, Mr. Cavallo, as I mentioned before, um, but I think it was it was needed to at some point it was needed to uh, introduce some flexibility in the exchange rate of the peso against. Uh, other currencies and, and there was a discussion back then to introduce a basket of currencies that would include the real as our main trading partner perhaps the eu as our second uh, largest trading partner and uh, um, so, so 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 the dilemma was to devalue or not to devalue yeah. just like china had been for many decades pegged to the dollar but later on they changed they're pegging to a basket of currency which allowed them to indirectly to devalue if they need to yeah. to regain competitiveness so so uh, your currency strengthened you lost competitiveness there was a major debate to devalue or not to devalue in order to regain competitiveness and because because, point, because people were, were so enamored with the with the, the convertibility system that had brought so S such huge benefits to the country so they basically didn't have the courage to that would have been necessary back then probably to say you know what this has run its course and we need to uh, to, to, to introduce some flexibility in, in the currency exchange rate um, keeping the convertibility so keeping the right for people to have deposits in other currencies and and, and have debt in other currencies and so on uh, but but uh, flexibilizing the, uh, the exchange rate. The exchange. Well, that, that didn't happen. That didn't happen and, and led to basically a situation that was unsustainable. Argentina, oh, oh uh, simultaneously, the, the main You were piling foreign debt at the same time? Uh, and, and mainly because of the uh, many provinces um, started to, many states within Argentina. Uh -huh. uh, Argentina is, a, at least in theory, a federal system. And uh, uh, so some provinces, many provinces, actually started to uh, uh, emit their own uh, their own bonds, their own like like yes. pseudo currencies. Right? Yes, it happens all the time. Whenever the currency is overvalued, and whenever people feel that there is a shortage of currency, yeah. not enough money, and then the local authorities try to introduce. It yeah. happens in the currency. Anyway, so, so that that that, that, uh, that happened, okay, f and that further worsened the situation. And at some point, and Argentina was uh, was was running a, 
a significant uh, deficit, uh, a current account deficit, which, which uh, led to the need of having external financing. As uh, uh, and we, 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 ha we enjoyed over the whole decade basically a strong support by the uh, International Monetary Fund. Uh, but then all of a sudden in 2001, the, monetary, the International Monetary Fund uh, decided not to renew the, uh, the, the, the credit facilities that they had. And so I'm, I'm speaking in very simple terms. Uh, there are a lot of technicalities in that, but no, that's no, basically what happened. Yeah, so and, that, and that led to basically a, a collapse. Argentina stopped being able to uh, honor uh, its debts. Fine. Uh, now, in the meantime, it's important to clarify, was Argentina running what's called twin deficits? It was running large fiscal deficits and correct. at the same correct. Correct. large correct. current account, uh, which is, you know, which is usually the mother of all financial crisis, yeah. is you get when you run both of them at the same time. And the government is very unwilling to cut the fiscal deficit. Yeah. And therefore, this can't possibly cure the trade deficit. Correct, correct. Okay, so the government wouldn't uh, cut. The twin deficit eventually exploded one way or another. The IMF cut the cord. So when was the crisis again? 2002? 2001. So basically, uh, um, what happened was that the, the, the IMF decided not to uh, renew its facilities with, uh, with Argentina and that, that led to a basically a collapse of the economy uh, the the um, the so-called uh, corralito uh, was introduced whereby because there was a huge run on the banks people felt like uh, the 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 days of the convertibility with the dollar uh, were counted and uh, so people start started to to take out more and more money, so it was a clear, you know, run on the banks. I had to be yeah. stopped. Well, well, it's a difference: run on the bank or run on the dollar. This is very big difference. Both, both. Okay, so, so both on the banks and on the dollar. You want to take the money out, and then remember back then, the, the peso and the dollar were convertible. So you could, you had a peso account. You could go to the, your ATM and say, "I want dollars." Correct. And then you would get dollars out of the ATM, right? In, sure. in Argentina, okay. instead of pesos. Right. Um, the same as in Cambodia, the way I was there two years ago. Okay. So. Um, so, and, and so basically, the Coralito was introduced, whereby the restrictions were um, imposed to so that you could only re remove from the bank a certain amount. I forgot that you know, three hundred dollars, something like that, uh, we'll uh, per these, week. Yeah, we call these capital controls. Capital controls. Exactly what happened to Greece, and exactly what happened in our. Uh, banking financial system. So whenever uh, the currency in the banking system begins to implode, the first thing is they uh, restrict conversion of the currency. The second thing is they restrict withdrawal of money from the banking system because you can just withdraw the money, they're going to black market, exchange your money, when you exchange your money, the local currency crashes even more. Yeah. So so they got to cut both. So capital controls, currency controls, okay? Yeah. Uh -huh. And, th and that led to a, basically a, a total total collapse. The government was uh, a, a, the president resigned. Some people say that uh, they were forced uh, out of power, uh, and um, the uh, the opposition party, uh, very populist party, took power. We had uh, four or five presidents in one week, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then basically the the the. the the law of the convertibility, the convertibility law uh, was uh, was uh, cancelled, and Argentina declared uh, a, a default, the largest default in history of, of a sovereign state, mm -hmm. um, uh, defaulting on something like eighty billion dollars. Yes, so they call it moratorium. Yeah. Uh, so so Death moratorium. And, and that and that that cost, you know, that was such a. a, a Gigantic shock in the economy uh, that you know the employment rate, unemployment rate uh, uh, went up. Uh, I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but went through the roof. Uh, uh, people, the, you know, the majority of the society that was uh, kind of in the in the middle classes or, or you know somewhere in the middle class or, or or lower middle class, all of a sudden went fell through the the they were the in of, of, they were in poverty. Now, is it is it at that point where they say, well, which of these two crises I've read and I remember vividly, where they said that in the capital at that time, uh, right before the bust, 
the uh, real estate, nice um, apartment will cost $100,000 and at the end of the bust, at the bottom, it will cost just about $10,000 and the real estate prices roughly collapsed in dollar terms 10 times. I don't think that, I mean, that might obviously uh, might have been one apartment that, that, uh, where that, that happened. happened. But, uh, in dollar but, but, I, but I think, no, what happened was that there was a period because after, after the collapse of the currency, the government suspended convertibility and, and then uh, basically the peso uh, got devalued by a factor of uh, four. Okay. So it went from one to one with the dollar to uh, four one yes. to four yes. uh, or four to one to the dollar. Right. Um, so that, and, and, and basically if you had savings in the bank, that used to be dollar savings, they all got pacified. Correct. They, they, of course, the government will, will, will convert them first to the local currency, then they'll devalue your currency, and effectively they stole 75% of your uh, of the, currency exactly. savings. And, and, and then, so, uh, and, and by the way, if you had a, an internal, uh, internal credit debt, right? Right. That also got pacified, even if it was in dollars. Yes, of course. So that means that basically that a, a huge transfer of wealth occurred from savers Correct. to, uh, to uh, savers and dollar holders to... Which was everybody, because the currency right. was convertible. Right? It was, everybody was saving in dollars. Even if you had pesos in the bank, right. you had a law that said that that dollar is worth, that peso is worth a dollar, right? Correct. correct, so, correct. So, so basically... Um, uh, there was a huge transfer of, of wealth from savers uh, to um, borrowers, borrowers right. and uh, uh, a massive impoverishment. Uh, one, of one, one, of, one of them obviously was the state. Right? Of course, the government is first. Second, exactly. the banks. Yeah, always yeah. correct. So um, and, and that led to a total collapse of the economy, and the that that absolutely absolutely uh, became. A, like a most traumatic experience for the majority of Argentinians. Right. Um, and, and also and demoralized so, culture, culture degraded, morals degraded. It, 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 was, it was a total, total, total disaster. Okay. And Meaning economic, social, moral, political, every, every, education, everything, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip now from 2002 to 2018. Right, but what, uh, was the fix, time, what was the fix in 2002? What did they do? They fixed the currency again? They no, uh, so, 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 so basically, if, if you... What was the fix if, in 2002 to regain, re, to get back on track? Yeah, what happened was the miracle of a currency devaluation, right? Okay. Uh, so all of a sudden, if you, if you devalue by 75%, Oh, okay, right? that and, fixed and, the problem. And, and you export goods, and you produce exports that the world want to okay. buy, all of a sudden, you are the cheapest producer of everything. Right? Okay, so, 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 so your currency was overvalued, and then you devalued to the point where your currency became significantly undervalued, it became highly competitive, competitive. on the global financial, global uh, commodity markets, so it became a major uh, exporter, you regain your exports, and that basically uh, made the economy let, let, that, yeah, exactly. So that, 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 led, that led to a recovery, um, and and then obviously we had throughout the the two thousands, the entire decade, we had amazingly favorable commodity prices. Absolutely, right? a major so, commodity boom market that started in two thousand. So that, so that what, 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 what used what used to be you know all the macroeconomic circumstances were bad for Argentina towards the end of the nineties. All of a sudden. You know, we went through a, a dramatic crisis ourselves, but then all of a sudden the wind turned completely in our backs, yeah. and everything was helping us. Right? Yes, everything. Correct. Uh, so, so, that, so that, that 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 basically took the country out of the crisis. Uh, unfortunately, we had a, a, a very populistic government that uh, extremely corrupt as well, and uh, uh, they, uh, in spite of the great macroeconomic conditions, uh, the country. Uh, went through. What was the guy? Was it Kirchner? Or? Yeah, Kirchner. Yeah, yeah. Kirchner. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so 
let's skip to the actual okay. subject we want to talk about. Right. Which so, is so, but from 2002, basically, the, the economy has been growing and steadily and growing and doing well from 2002 until recently. Uh, pro probably way below potential. Uh, if things would have been done uh, right, uh, the country would have had the, op the, the opportunity to use the commodity boom to actually propel itself into a, uh, you know, a completely different dimension. And now we're struggling, still and struggling there. Save and pay off debts. Yeah. So, um, so now going uh, uh, fast forward into 2018, where we had a, a mini revival of that crisis that we that the country went through in 2001 2002 because the uh, the, the the currency even though now we have a floating currency so we don't have a peg mm -hmm. uh, throughout 2017 the currency was pretty stable relative to the uh, dollar uh, relative to the dollar and the euro pretty stable um, and uh, even in spite of the fact that the inflation rate was about 20 percent, right? That's that's inflation which has uh, that comes from uh, from the previous administration. That uh, um, the new administration that is doing the, go the new government uh, of uh, Mr. Mauricio Macri uh, is is trying to do the right things. Is uh, you know is, is is doing a lot of things economically the right way, uh, but they inherited a very bad situation, they're trying to deal with it, and uh, you know, in spite of the fact that we had an uh, inflation of 20%, galloping, galloping, galloping inflation. Did you also have the twin deficits again, the fiscal deficit and the trade? Uh, well, no, not trade deficit, but current account, right? Current account. Yeah, deficit, current yes. account. So, so um, the fiscal deficit has been there uh, because the government has been spending uh, way beyond their means uh, for, for forever. Um, Socialism. Uh, yeah, so, so that was the previous administration. The current administration, they are trying to contain uh, uh, public spending, but they inherited an uh, overbloated uh, uh, government apparatus. Structural uh, deficits that you can't just cut. You, you can't just cut, uh, especially if you are in the middle of, uh, of an economic slowdown that, uh, that would you know, uh, lead to an increase in employment rates and so on and make the government uh, uh, very unpopular. This government uh, won the election but by a very narrow margin, unexpectedly won. Everybody expected the, the previous guys to continue in power. They themselves thought that they were going to stay in power forever. But uh, the middle class, uh, you know, realized that we were not going in the right direction and, and they voted for a, a reformist government. Okay. Uh, these guys came in, inherited a very difficult situation. And, uh, and then, Throughout the 2017, the currency stayed more or less uh, flat, more or less, I'm saying, way below the 20% inflation. So, so basically, the currency was appreciating, if you uh -huh. will. Oh, yeah, 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 of course, of course. During 2017, in real terms. In right? real terms, correct. They had a real appreciation, even though it stayed flat up against the correct. Okay. Uh, or, or went down a little bit, yeah. Okay. Went down a so little you bit. were losing competitiveness during, all, uh, during that period. 2017, yeah. Okay. Uh, in pace with what we spoke in the previous video, the fact that the dollar was going down vis-a-vis uh, -vis most currencies in the world, right? Uh, so that, that kind of was part of the equation as well, that the peso stayed more or less uh, uh, flat during 2017. So there was, uh, in a way, the need to, uh, for the peso to, 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 you know, to devalue uh, slightly. But as these things, things happen, there was a, um, a big maturity of uh, internal uh, national domestic bonds uh, in the, uh, in the, I think in mid-March sometime, I'm sorry, mid-May, mid-May, mid mid-May. Mid uh, bonds in domestic currency. In domestic currency, okay. right? In domestic you guys currency. were able to issue just recently 100-year bonds, right? 100-year bonds in, in dollars, yeah. In dollars, yes. Yeah, which were uh, high, heavily oversubscribed. <laughs> correct, correct. Which, this is which, like, this is just speaks of the 
craziness. I mean, the expectation will be for 10 bankruptcies and defaults within the next 100 years yeah. <laughs> if things stay the same. Well, uh, uh, obviously the government, uh, the, previ the previous government would have, would have never been able to do that. This government, you know, because they enjoy some credibility uh, and because the markets were very favorable, uh, they were able to do it. And right? because so, of plenty of suckers in the Western banking financial correct. system who <laughs> will buy 100 year Argentinian bonds. I mean, <laughs> these, these people probably never heard of Argentina, never studied any Argentinian history. If they did, they'd never touch those bonds, right? But yeah. anyway, okay, okay. Yeah. so. So, um, so anyway, what, what happened is that all of a sudden the dollar started to go up, uh, okay, no. yes, a uh, lot. In, in expectation that there's going to be an increase, uh, in, in, in expectation of the, the large maturity of, of uh, domestic bonds, uh, that that would lead to, uh, to, uh, to an increase in interest rates and that would lead to an increase in, in inflation as well. And, uh, and, and, and in, in the middle of this uh, beginning of uh, you know the, the the sense that things are 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 the, do the dollar is kind of uh, running uh, running away. Uh, the government comes up and announces that they're going to go to the uh, IMF to request for a credit facility for the country, to, which to, to support the local currency to support the local currency to support all the restructuring programs that they have to they're, finance the government to, to, itself to, fi to finance the government okay because if the government finances itself internally no, it's no, only going to devalue the the currency a lot further correct yeah so um that which you know if, if you are uh, an unemotional uh, person homo economicus and, and you think uh, Okay, so um, I am uh, a sovereign state. Where can I get the best financing for my financial needs? Where can I get the you know the best interest rates? Do I go to like you know Argentina was to be used to be financed by Venezuela, right? Yeah, At, what a joke! Uh, right? in, in, in interest rates between you know fourteen uh, percent and eighteen percent or something like that in dollars, right? In right. dollars, uh, so. Usually, versus that, versus going to a place like the International Monetary Fund, that you know can can give you a facility for say four percent, as it turned out to be, um, you know it's the reasonable thing to do is to talk to uh, strong financial institutions that can give you uh, you know serious finance at serious, mm -hmm. at, at, at so, normal so, rates. So you're already talking the crisis arrived and now the government is looking for a the, the, the crisis was brewing, right? So, so, okay. So the, the dollar was. The, the peso was around uh, you know 18 to 20 pesos per dollar. Uh -huh. We're coming from one to one in 2000, right? 2001. Okay, okay, okay. it's already 20. Yeah, it's already uh, so 18 or so, um, and and then uh, 18 or 20 or so, and then the government when the government announces that the they're going to go to the IMF, uh -huh. that triggered a completely emotional response in the entire country because back then everybody associated the IMF pulled out and we went up and we collapsed right yes 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 so everybody everybody, knows. everybody, everybody thought Whatever. this is gonna be a replay of 2001 all over again yes and 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 that led to a huge run on dollar correct so, so in, in within after that announcement the, the, the peso went from something like the exchange rate but let's say 20 to something like 25, right? Okay. Like a 20% depreciation yeah, so, so, so within soon, a week. So soon the Argentinian peso will be worth as much as a Philippine peso. There you go. I didn't know that. But, uh, mm. so, so basically, the, um, w what happened was, I think, a, 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 an emotional reaction. Okay. Condition, or, or condition very rational, very rational. Oh, things are going bad. I better convert my money before they get frozen again. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you 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 could argue both ways. My interpretation is that the that was an emotional reaction. That uh, that the situation didn't grant that reaction rationally. Even though obviously the country is far from from perfect, but the government is going. A long way uh, to correct the distortions of the past and to create a, 
uh, you know, a, a, a good macroeconomic environment. And the fact that they have indeed received on Friday, on Thursday actually, on Thursday night in the US, uh, Friday morning here, uh, it was announced that the IMF actually provided uh, a large facility at 4% interest rates. Uh, actually, that, that facility was way larger than people expected, and Correct. the Argentinian president was so proud he could get it double Correct. or triple, they would have said, oh, the situation must be a lot worse than we thought in the US double. So, so in, in any case, the, the basically, I, I think that the fact that the IMF granted the, uh, this large facility is, is a is a testimony that the government is moving in the right direction from a very difficult situation but moving in the right direction and I think that the crisis was uh, an overreact an emotional overreaction of the people themselves of the people themselves this run on the dollar was uh, uh, an, an, you know an, uh, an exaggeration if you will uh, and I think that the the peso is you know ever since it, it reached 25 in from 20 to 25 in a week or two, and then it kind of stayed there, stabilized, uh, it stabilized there. And I think that now the currency has caught up the uh, the need for the valuation that yeah, we yeah, have yeah. accumulated throughout 2017. So that uh, you know we are at the, at the at the at the level now that is reasonable for the currency, and uh, so. It, you and I actually, you know, everything that I'm saying, as as I as I mentioned in the last video, I am, you know, I, I am an investor. I'm a trader myself. So uh, my opinions. I'm not trying to convince anyone or, or anything. I I invest my own money after my own opinions. And I actually, in pretty much at the bottom of the crisis, this I, was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, a week ago. Uh, between yeah, uh, uh, two, two weeks and a week ago, okay. I actually heavily invested into Argentinian banks, okay. uh, which in my view are you know solid. Uh, Argentina is one of the most underbanked countries that I know of. Uh, there is a lot of pent up uh, potential demand for banking services, and. I that you know based on that uh, there are four banks in Argentina which are listed in U.S. Uh, stock exchanges so hence they are basically uh, uh, supervised by the by the U.S. authorities in the in the sense and uh, I invest in heavily in, in two of them the, those that I considered uh, most undervalued mm -hmm. and uh, I was a little bit too early a few days too early on on one. But I got the very bottom on the second one, uh, so basically, and I'm 20% up okay. from my buying map. 20% in. Have they fallen in the last three or six months, like two times, three times, four times, or 20% or 80%? How much they fallen so that you're buying close, uh, 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 to, that you feel that they're under value? How much they fall? So, um, if in the uh, last uh, year or six months or whatever, uh, bet between uh, between forty uh, between forty and fifty percent. So fifty percent in, in what in, in how many months? In uh, since January, let's call it since January. Okay, okay, since the beginning of the year. Yeah. Okay. So um, so less than half a year, and and they're they're fifty percent below their their peaks, uh, and uh, the fundamentals have deteriorated slightly. Inflation, because of the devaluation of the dollar, the inflation is going to go up uh, slightly. Um, and what is their currency exposure? Do they have a lot more liabilities in dollars and uh, less assets in dollars? Because this is very important. Uh, in you, 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 you have to you have to bear in mind, as you very well said, Argentina went through uh, you know one crisis after the other. Uh, there's been uh, you know multiple currency runs, multiple hyperinflations, and the banks. They have all, uh, not all, but at least Most. those those bands that are now strong, they have survived and thrived through those periods, right? Yeah. So these guys... Okay, they don't know, what, they know they, what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Okay, right? they, they, know they already they're experienced, not like in Italy or other countries where Correct. they don't have the experience of currency crisis. Okay, all right. All right, so, so, so uh, in a sense, uh, uh, trying to wrap up. So you think that uh, there weren't any major fundamentals for the crisis, 
uh, beyond the currency being overvalued uh, and still getting more overvalued uh, and uh, basically you believe that uh, now that the currency has devalued 20-30% that, that has gotten uh, the economy back to be relatively competitive and you don't believe that there are any other major weaknesses or defects like the twin deficits like fiscal... Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh yeah, no, 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 uh, uh, Argentina is probably among the, the countries in the world that is susceptible to crises uh, on the on the on the top uh, on the on the list of the top candidates, right? Up, yeah, up, it's up always there, up, up, it's always one of the worst. Up, 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 up there, up there with Turkey and uh, so and Mexico, of course, for, for sure. But uh, as opposed to uh, the administration of Mr. Erdogan uh, in Turkey, that is probably doing a lot of bad things. Uh, Means compared to him, you're a whole lot better. Uh, I, I think so. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that at least this government has the intended, and the current administration in Argentina has the intention to uh, correct the distortions of the past and to put the country onto a, a road of a macroeconomic stabilization that will lead to, uh, if they manage to do it, if well, they manage to do it, which are is going to be able to cut the deficits because uh, a lot of the headaches and problems come from fiscal deficits. Well, I mean, the, unless the, they cut them, nothing gets fixed. The, uh, the IMF uh, credits uh, come with uh, strong uh, preconditions, as you know, and uh, that's why people don't like it. That's why people yeah, people hate it. Yeah, uh, prefer but, to issue bonds that don't have that they don't have any 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 kind of. Uh, uh, footnotes, yeah. right? Uh, and, and people don't like to get on the diet, yeah. right? They prefer just keep eating. But I, I think that this is very positive because you not only have the intention of the government, but also you have an external creditor which is going to be dictating you to say, well, uh, monitoring you yeah. very closely and uh, making sure that you do the progress that you have to do, right? And, and, and implement the sometimes painful measures that you have to implement. Yeah. But back when we were back in Bulgaria and we all, they, they all kept talking about, uh, you know, we're going to lose our sovereignty and the European Union is going to dictate on Bul in Bulgarian central bank and the government what to do. He said, yeah, 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 that's what we want. We all Bulgarians want. We want to be run by Germans and German diktat will be infinitely better than our own <laughs> Bulgarian diktat. So yeah, let German tell us what to do. We like that. Let the European uh, Union tell us what to do. We like that. We want because the European Union is the lesser of the two evils. Yeah. So maybe relative to your own government, maybe the IMF will just turn out to be the lesser of the two evils. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Anything concluding uh, remarks? Uh, on yeah. No. So I, I, I think I think that uh, uh, obviously Argentina is not out of the water in the sense that it, it is not uh, clear sailing ahead and uh, it's not going to be easy. But uh, you don't I, think things are going to get a whole lot worse? I, 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 I think I think that through this uh, facility from the IMF. We bought some time at least to, to, and, and to that, stay that time will, will, will give us the opportunity to do things right. Let's see if we actually do things right. If we if we actually do things right, that will be very very positive. And I'm not, um, you know, I'm, I'm invested in, in Argentinian banks at the moment uh, for for the for the rebound. Whether that's going to become a sustainable move up, I don't know. And that uh, I'm to going to monitor the situation closely. If uh, if uh, if you know if the government and the people realize that this is a great opportunity to do things right, um, uh, that would be amazing. Uh, otherwise, you know you will have to act accordingly and, and change your mind. Okay, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. I actually learned quite a few things. I actually clarified quite a few concepts which were a little bit. Hazy, because I'm not an expert in Argentina. I mean, uh, I've been teaching international finance. I've been teaching uh, currency crisis, and Argentina is always a well, great I, example. I, I, I got <laughs> so many of them that I get to confuse what was when. Because you had another one in the 80s, 80, 81, 82. Oh, yeah, Paul yeah. Walker raised the interest rates of 20 percent, and all, all of Latin America just blew up and collapsed. And you had to have another bailout. 
again. So I got uh, in the 80s, 81, 82, I had a crisis, then I had the 90s, yep. again, crisis, then I had a 2002 crisis, now in 2018, potential another crisis. In the, in the, in the 90s, I, I remember vividly, uh, and that marked my whole, my whole life. I, I've never, in my whole life, I've never had debt in anything. I never took a mortgage, I never took a, a car loan, I always pay 100% of my credit cards. I, my, my liabi the liability side of my personal balance sheet has always, always been zero, right? Always. And I think that that is probably too conservative. Probably I would have been, I would have benefited if I would have been a little bit more open okay. towards that. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that I grew up in Argentina and I, I, I saw uh, hyperinflation, I lived through hyperinflation myself as a young uh, young person that that marked my whole life i remember when i was uh, when i was in the university in argentina and my i come from a small town and so my father um uh because of uh, coming from a small town the banking the, 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 the banks in my small town are, are not as, as sophisticated as, as in the city where i was studying so my father uh, opened a, a fixed time deposit in a bank in the city that I had to renew for him. Yeah, in uh, a local currency, in the local which currency. paid a lot of high local interest rate. Correct. And, but listen to this, the fixed time deposit was for seven days. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Because, and, okay. and, and you, the idea was that you would take a short term, a short term fixed time deposit, because Even the, the, next time, the next time you will renew for higher interest rate. Correct. And the next time, will, the next week will be higher interest rate yet. And, and this thing started to accelerate to a point where, you know, even the interest, obviously the, the, uh, the inflation in goods and services started to go way beyond the interest rates in the banks. Right, right? so we get a negative real interest rate. So basically my dad said, Pablo, just go and buy a car. Okay, yeah. Just sure. buy a car, just put it in, in the, uh, just park it, do nothing with the car. Right. But instead of having the, the money you know, evaporate, evaporating value. Uh, you gotta have a real bank. asset. Yes. You have a real, even though it's an asset that that depreciates yes. so much, like a car, yeah. right? A car. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. not talking yeah. about a property. It's better than sitting in the bank. But it's it was much better than sitting in the bank. I know. Uh, I, know. Uh, so, I also grew up from my 20 uh, when I was in the army uh, in 1920 year old. The hyperinflation, communism collapsed. So for seven, six years, I lived in a massive inflation and a hyperinflation, and that definitely marked everything you're talking about. Your inflation there was exactly the same during the hyperinflation in Bulgaria, and this also marked my life to first i was impressed with it of course my family was financially devastated my parents lost 90 percent of their wealth except for the house my brother lost of his money most of his money which were mostly in the bank where the interest rate couldn't keep and he got into a financial pyramid ponzi scheme where the bank was paying an extraordinary interest that was supposedly above the inflation were all uh, evaporated so that basically got me to dedicate most of my life to study monetary policy and of course monetary history and of course currencies and gold and later on Austrian economics to where I get to understand the money side of life and that's what I've been doing for the last now 25, 6 or 7 years. But I got the first brutal lessons where just in a couple of months coke went from 1 to 2 dollars, meaning in Bulgaria currency level. Yeah, yeah. And then from 2 went to 3, and then to 3 to 4, and then to 5, and then to 6. And then uh, a little later it's 10, and then 20, and then 30, and then 15, and then 100, and then 200, and then 300. Okay. So this is how I got my first lessons of inflation. This was straight type inflation. I had to manage my money back and forth and go into currencies. And I, I, I had to keep uh, some of my money into dollars and the dollar bills have to be one and five dollars. And every couple of days, I'm gonna to go to the exchange and convert the one dollar to local currency. And I'm gonna use it for eating. When I get done, meaning when I spend the money, then I'm gonna go and exchange another dollar or another <laughs> five dollars. Yeah. And so I kind of learned what to do but this was also my motivation to get to become expert in uh, 
monetary economics and That's great. study inflation and reading now Bresciani to Rani about inflation and the history of inflation, what's going on and everything inflation and of course money to America. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. It's great. Great. It's great. I appreciate it. I really, really learned a lot. Super. Thank you. <laughs> How much?